Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite bass fishing lures of all time. It is so good that some places and tournament trails have even banned this lure and that is going to be the Alabama rig. I fish this thing all spring and fall. You've seen it a bunch on my channel. Fish it for largemouth and smallmouth. Um, we're going to be fishing it for largemouth today and then we'll have a few smallmouth videos coming up in the future. Today we're going to give a general overview of what this technique is, how to do it, all that kind of stuff. And a portion of today's video is brought to you by the deep dive app we actually use the app to get today's video idea we'll show you what it is right now essentially what you can do is type in your favorite lake there's plenty of other features in this as well but it'll help you pick the right lure for the conditions while you're out there on the water so you can click in this top right section right here you can pick anything you need so we're doing some offshore pre-spawn bass fishing there's not a lot of vegetation out there and we're fishing for largemouth so we select all of that you can click on the water itself or on the, the body of water and it'll bring up a bunch of bait ideas. So I can go ahead and scroll through here and it actually showed me a bunch of different baits that I could use for today's video and would work for today's conditions. Umbrella rig was right there. You can click on more. It will give you color details, where you should fish it, show you examples of what that structure would look like on your Navionics chip, your actual fish finder itself, uh, sometimes even satellite imaging. It'll show you the retrieve, the gear you need, everything you need to know about that technique and where you should fish it to help you catch more fish. So if you'd like to check the deep dive app out to help you catch more fish while you're out there on the water, there will be a link below. You can go ahead and check that out uh, and play around in the app yourself. Find out what baits might work on your local body of water and check out some of the other features like water clarity estimator and other stuff like that. Now back to today's video. So before we talk about the Alabama rig itself, let's actually talk about your rod and reel setup. This is one bait that you do need a specialty piece of equipment to actually throw this bait uh, and this rod right here I've been throwing it around today and it has been beyond excellent to throw this a rig around we did catch a couple fish on it uh, maybe we'll drop a couple clips in while we're talking through the bait uh, and hopefully when we go out on the water to show you how to fish it we can catch us another one even though the bites kind of slowed down a little bit for the day this is the Icon Swimbait Rod. This is the 7.8, moderate fast, medium heavy. It is rated from a half ounce to all the way to three ounce baits. So when you're loading this thing up with jig head swim baits, everything like that, it's gonna have some weight to it. So you need that higher lure rating on there. It's also rated from 12 to 50 pound test. Um, we'll talk about line here in a second, but you can use braid or fluorocarbon with this technique. With my reel as well, I have the Shimano Corrado 200K with the 6 2 to 1 gear ratio. You want that slower gear ratio so you can fish this bait and keep it in the strike zone longer and just keep those paddle tails kicking. Um, you don't want a fast gear ratio where you're going to kick this thing up way off the bottom and get it way too high over top of the fish. They are going to come up from underneath to get this bait and you want to keep it over top of their head. But a lot of times I'm going to fish this in very cold water and you want to be able to reel it slow enough to keep it in front of those fish. Like I said, when we're gonna talk about line right here, I prefer 20 pound fluorocarbon if I can get away with it, just because it will get you more bites. Sometimes they don't see that, and I know there's wires all over this thing, but something about the grinding of the braid going through your guides and just that dark green line, for some reason I have caught more fish on fluorocarbon than I have on braid. More importantly, the reason that I like it, especially around smallmouth, those fish hit it so hard that sometimes when you set the hook on them with that rod that doesn't have a lot of give, you can bend some of these hooks out depending on how light wire they are. And if you have that fluorocarbon, just that little bit of stretch will keep it from bending hooks out. Um, I've actually experimented with that up on Lake Erie. I was throwing braid one day and I lost fish after fish after fish and I could not figure out why they kept pulling off. As soon as I switched to fluorocarbon, I didn't lose another fish the rest of the day. Uh, they literally would just have that little bit of stretch and it wasn't ripping the hooks out of their mouth. So sometimes you do need braid, you need that heavier line to be able to hold those fish. And I know these things are expensive once you rig it all up with all the baits, so you want to use braid so you can get it back if you get it snagged or something like that. Uh, but sometimes you just have to accept that depending on if you want to get some more bites while you're out there on the water. Choice is yours. You could use 50 to 65 pound braid or 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon. That's what I would recommend for line. I've caught fish either way. Just go ahead and pick whichever one you like best for you. And then when it comes to the rig itself, 
This is the Sixth Sense umbrella rig. So this is the 5.5 inch version. Um, I like a smaller, more compact umbrella rig, especially up here in the Northeast or around Smallmouth. They also make a 6.6 .6 inch version. You could go with that one as well, or 6.5 inch version. Um, it's, it's just a slight bigger profile than this one is right here. I prefer the smaller one. And then how I deck this thing out depends on the state that I'm in. Like I talked about, this thing is banned in some tournaments. Fortunately, I'm practicing for a tournament that does allow me to use it, so I'm going to use it because it is very effective in the springtime. We'll talk about that when we're talking about how to fish it out there on the water. Um, but the other thing is some places just limit the number of hooks you can use. So actually the state that I'm in, you're only allowed to use three hooks. Usually in Pennsylvania, I can use five and I'll load it all out with hooks so that you get the best number of chances. But here in Ohio, you can only use three. So what I do to make sure one, that the fish eat the actual baits themselves and two, that I don't get a ticket, I put two quarter ounce jig heads on the bottom and that's gonna keel this bait so that it rides perfectly straight up and down like this. I'll put an eighth ounce in the middle and then I'll put eighth ounces on top and I'll cut the hooks off with like a mini bolt cutters so that they're just teasers. And these are the six cents umbrella rig jig heads. They have the screw lock keeper on there. So I can just screw those baits on, cut the hook off and those aren't coming off, but I still get the weight of the jig head. I don't have like the hitchhikers. So the baits spinning in circles, they still ride like it is a swim bait on a jig head. There's no hooks on there so I don't get a ticket. Then what I do, I have the quarter ounces on the bottom with hooks so that it rides down because the fish are going to come from underneath and get it. So most of the time they can't even reach these baits before they get another one. So they'll bite the uh, baits with hooks over the baits with teasers. Then I'll also put smaller ones on the four outside wires and I'll put a bigger one of a different color right in the middle. And that is going to give them a target back behind that they'll bite this first and usually get that one as a hook. Um, sometimes they won't, sometimes they'll still bite the bottom ones and sometimes they'll still bite the teasers. It's something that you will have happen when you're fishing this bait uh, if you can't use all the hooks on the bait. Sometimes they'll just get one weird and they'll come up and eat the teasers. You'll feel them bite it. A lot of times if you keep reeling and don't set the hook on that fish, they'll come back and get another one or you can throw back in that area again and they'll come back and get it a different way the next time they bite it. I do like blades on my rig as often as I can. Sometimes if you need a little bit more stealth, you can go without the blades. Uh, but a lot of times I just like throwing the blades. It still makes the, it just makes the school look bigger uh, and like a big, better meal for those fish. So that's how I set this thing up. I have the Divine swim baits on here, Clearwater Rose 3.2s all around the outside, and then a 3.8 Pro Blue right in the middle. That's the setup. Um, we've caught a few fish on it today. So let's head out there and see if we can get one more to finish off today's video. And we'll show you how to fish this thing, where you want to fish it, everything you need to know like that. So now that we talked about the setup to actually throw this A-Rig, let's go ahead and fish this thing around. See if we can maybe catch us a fish. We have lost all wind. It is like glass out here now. Um, not feeling very optimistic. I have literally not had a bite since I want to say probably about 11 a.m. Uh, but we're going to try and throw it anyway. We're going to show you how to do this, how to throw this thing around, and uh, what type of areas we're going to look for. So the one thing that I look for with my A-Rig is places that these fish can feed up on bait fish. Um, they're going to chase shad. They're going to do all that kind of stuff um, and, and really just feed up for the spawn. In areas where that's gonna happen is points outside of a spawning bay, um, steep banks, whatever. So like right here, we have just like a steep bank that drops and then up there is actually the spawning bay off to the left and there's a point that leads into that. So this entire bank is a good place that they can corral bait fish. They can hang out here. They can go deep if they get a cold front. They can do whatever they need until it's ready to go spawn. So anywhere you think those fish can just kind of chase bait fish around, feed up, hang out until it's time to spawn, those are the type of areas that you're looking for. Actually, there's a giant ball of shad right in front of me right here, flicking on the surface. So you have bait, you have a spawning bay right there. That's the type of stuff you're looking for when you're fishing this A-Rig around. Let's actually see if there's anything underneath of it. Now, all you're gonna do with this A-Rig is literally cast it out and wind it in. Occasionally, you can flare your reel handle like that to try and get them, if you have a follower, to bite it. I found I've had the most luck with this bait, just slow and steady winding it back to the boat. Uh, and just keeping it in front of those fish as long as you can. I try to keep it above them, so sometimes you might have to reel faster, you might have to change your jig head size, but you wanna keep it above the fish 
to make sure that they can come up and get it. They're going to come off the bottom. You can get suspended ones that eat this thing. Um, it allows you to cover new areas of the water column that you can't quite cover with other baits. So all we do is we just throw it out there. We have that six three to one gear ratio and we just slowly wind her back in. Uh, it looks like I'm reeling really fast, but I'm not. Um, I only have a 6.3, so it's not picking up a lot of line. I've been actually dragging bottom a lot today and found that I've actually had to reel a lot faster than I thought I did uh, to keep pace with these um, fish on how high up they are sitting in the water column today. So we're going to keep cranking this thing around. We'll see if we can get us one. There's a couple more on live scope right here, right out in front of the boat. Live scope does help. You can cast around and see if you can see fish out in front of the boat. Um, but actually all of my fish today came without catching them on live scope. I was just looking at what was on the graph, what it looked like down there. Was there an area for them to corral bait and kind of hang out until the spawn? Uh, and I've just been hitting a bunch of staging spots and that's how I've been catching them today. So you can totally do this without live scope. I've done it for years without live scope. I know a lot of people now that um, it's out and, and there's been a lot of big fish caught on A-rigs with live scope. They think they need live scope with the A-rig, but there's one right there. Didn't even look at it live scope and he still ate it. And it's a giant. Oh, he's not that big. But point proven, I was looking at the camera and he still ate it without live scope. There's bait around, there's a place for this fish to sit and he grabbed the red one actually. Typically what'll happen is they'll actually eat the biggest and colorful, different colored one in the school, uh, but sometimes they come up from underneath. If you're getting them on the bottom one a lot, it's definitely showing you that they're coming up from underneath. So that fish came off the bottom to come get that bait uh, and we were able to get us one. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see a video on how to set up your A-Rig properly, go ahead and check this one out. Hit that subscribe button down below. We'll have some smallmouth action coming soon on that A-Rig as well. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. And thanks for watching.